Every time I come down here to this archive, I learned that we have something else that uh, we hadn't realized we have. We're here in a, in a room that is kept at 63 degrees and has been for 10 years. We've made it available to uh, students of musical theater, uh, students of, of George and Ira's work. What are those? Oh, they, these are something very oh, special. I know what those are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Take a look at this. Well, this is my handwriting. Oh, my gosh. When, when you're working for Ira? These are the, well, this is why I was hired by Ira, to catalog his phonographer, because he called me his demon discographer. <laughs> <laughs> and these are all of the, um, Oh my God! Cards. I had to figure out a whole filing system because I said are these index cards. Or? Yeah. These are, these oh are index my cards. God. Yeah, because Ira wanted them organized. I said, Well, how do you want them alphabetized? He said, Well, what are the possibilities? <laughs> I said, Well, they can be done by artist, by song, by record label, by show. I said, How do you want it indexed? He said, Every way. And I wrote these all out by hand, like I got rhythm. It gives the the, the performer. The, the, the reference, the album, or the 78 or the 45, and then the reference number, which oh I, this code, gosh. this whole code I figured out. You were his computer. <laughs> this is concert music. So these are the songs by George and Ira. This would be concert music, George's compositions without Ira. And then there's another big... Uh, this is miscellaneous pop file. And these are the records that Ira played after George died that he said made him feel like George was telling him to go on. In the room. Yeah, these records. Wow. And look at this, the, the Wizard of Oz, also signed. Ah, this is oh incredible. Gosh, Arna? This yes. set, this 78 set of the Wizard of Oz is so rare. It's a, it's a usually valuable collectible. But to have it inscribed by the composer to Ira, dated September 12th, 1939, is spectacular. Especially since, as we know, Ira was secretly involved with he was. writing the lyric of Over the Rainbow. <laughs> he, he was. <laughs> so this um, is pretty amazing. This is more rare than the records, because nobody saved these, these, these booklets, because they were ephemera that they would always remove. This is fantastic. I've never seen this, except <laughs> I guess I did 30 years ago. I forgot. So, so Lee was your aunt, yep. right? Lee was my aunt. Lee was my father's sister. I remember when I was 14 coming to spend spring vacation, uh, which involved a train ride across the United States and a train ride back across the United States. But uh, there was a party while I was there, and I suddenly realized that that was a Groucho and Harpo marks on the sofa, one on each end of the sofa. <laughs> She's a very opinionated lady, and she formed the household and social life around her creative husband. Your deepest desire to, is to be an archivist. Why did you leave? Well, I had a falling out with Lee. They named me as a literary executor exactly. as part of Ira's estate. And Lee had a bit of pique about something I was involved with, with a college and a, and a concert. And she wanted me to pull out. And I knew that the university would lose thousands of dollars. And I said, morally, I can't do that. She said, well, then you're, you're fired. And um, I was devastated because I had expected to spend the rest of my life just tending to, in Ira's words, the Gershwin Plantation. And uh, I know that Lee felt bad about it after it happened, and it was the sort of thing where neither of us could go back to each other without losing face, and I was stubborn. And um, Lee was too. You know, it was a sort of thing of an angry kid, you know, mad at his parents. And eventually, she contacted me after I had done a television show on Ira's lyrics. And there was a rapprochement. And I got this message from her and I burst into tears. And yet, in, if you look at the world, it was, it was that, that that pushed you out to step out on your own. She, those initial contacts were made, yeah. uh, uh, and, and uh, you never let her down. Thank you. That was the last time I saw Iris' collection all together like that. The whole archive has been moved to the Library of Congress, which was Lee Gershwin's plan all along. So more people will get to see it, but never again in such a personal way.